Perfect. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 19 of the Bright Lights Podcast. I'm your host, Dean. Joined, as always, by my two co-hosts, Mahoney. What's up, guys? And PT. How we doing? How we doing today, boys? You know what? I've got... I've got one thing to say and one thing to say only. To say, dog. Um, it's been a week since Machado. I thought I'd be over it. I still am so pissed at the White Sox. It's kind of unhealthy. But PT, how are you feeling, buddy? Same old, same old. <laughs> yeah, PT sounds like he's depressed. Yeah, I think it's the Machado stuff. No, right? I'm not depressed. I'm just. I think he's just an asshole, to be honest with you. I'm just living life. Yeah, we're living, dog. All right, man. Let's let's stop talking. No one cares about us and how we are. Um, let's get into this. We got we got a lot of shit to talk about today. So again, as always, don't want to waste our time or your time, Mahoney. Go ahead, buddy. All right. So I'm gonna talk about my uh, Blackhawks for a couple minutes, and uh, let's just say it's like a roller coaster with the Blackhawks, and it's not good. Um, we had two huge games last weekend, and we lost. Both of them. We needed to come away with at least one of those wins. And, of course, we didn't. Um, just not good. Um, Delia's playing awful. Um, he actually got demoted to – there you go, Deegs. He got demoted. He's in the minor leagues for hockey now. Yeah, play the goals. Yeah, so we're not, ta- not going to be talking about much shit about Delia anymore. But Corey Crawford – and the game actually just started. Uh, they're playing Anaheim right now. Corey Crawford is in net, so hopefully that goes well. Um, you know what? I still am sticking to that we're not going to be making the playoffs, but I am still very excited to see what we do next year. Um, some more hockey news. We all wanted Panarin back. We, we all wanted the bread man. We all wanted him back. But Panarin did say... And this actually got leaked out um, that he is not coming back to the Blackhawks unless Stan Bowman is fired. Um, I, 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 I've been saying this the whole year. Stan Bowman should be gone. Um, there's really no reason that he should be doing anything with the Blackhawks. I mean, sure, he brought us three Stanley Cup rings. Um, but since then, it's been awful. Hasn't been fun. We haven't done anything. It's just hasn't been good. Hasn't been good at all. Yeah, um, it, like you said, it's just kind of been a roller coaster ride. We're going down right now. It's it's not fun. Um, I think it's just kind of disappointment after disappointment. Uh, we can't catch a break. The Sox are breaking our back, and now the kind of Blackhawks are breaking our back. And the Bulls are just shit. The um, Bulls are just fucking awful. But you know what's awesome is that now that the com- NFL Combine's coming around, we get to talk about a little more Bear stuff. So that's always a good positive because. They are kind of our light in the tunnel right now for us. So. They 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 are our light. They're the light, baby. Yeah, Show so us the light. There's always there's always positive to negative. So yeah, I mean we'll kind of we'll we'll hint at it real quick with the Bears because you know that's the only fun good stuff that we can talk about right now as Chicago fans. Um, well, PT, you're saying earlier that we we're talking to Joe Ross or the Bengals about getting John Joe Ross, yeah. John Ross. What do you think? I like it. He's to be honest, with you, he's. He's kind of a carbon copy of um, Taylor Gabriel. Um, he's extremely fast mm-hmm. on the smaller side, slot wide receiver. Um, I wouldn't mind it. I don't know what I would give away for him, um, but it'll be interesting. I'm not. I, I've also heard stuff about Howard. Um, you really can't. It's early. Um, you, you never know. I mean, you don't know. If, I mean, we can't even tell if these are true. I mean, you never know because all this MLB free agent stuff. You never know. So, no. I mean, it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of weeks, but I don't think anything serious is going to happen. Yeah, I don't, I don't think anything serious is going to happen either, but you never know. Deegs, anything going on with your uh, Pittsburgh Steelers? Um, the GM said that they're either going to – I mean, that they're not going to, like, undercompensate for Brown. So, basically, either they're going to trade him for what they believe is right value or he's going to be a Steeler next year. Um, they're not trading him anybody in the division or the Patriots. Do you, do you think that, he pulls a Le'Veon Bell and doesn't play? I don't care. If I mean, if he doesn't play, they don't have to pay him. So I don't give a fuck. That's true. He, he would be stupid to not play. Yeah. Um, I mean, no, I, I don't really care about football right now. Uh, I mean, the combine's cool if they can trade him. I did see something pretty interesting that the Jets are interested in trading their th- uh, third overall pick. 
And so, I mean, that that's probably a phone call I make if I'm Pittsburgh to see what it takes to get that third pick. Uh-huh. Maybe package Antonio Brown, a future pick, and you keep third and 20. That would be really interesting for me. But, I mean, other than that, I'm excited for the combine. We'll, we'll, we'll probably have a lot of things to talk about from the combine. A lot of yeah, oh yeah, things going up. We'll, we'll probably do another, another mock draft or something. I don't know, but that's, that's pretty much it, man, for football for me at least. Yeah, yeah, good old football. How's uh, the San Diego Fleet going? Huh? Two and one. Go Two and fleet, one, baby. Uh, got a got a big win last week. First place in the West Division, the San Diego Fleet. Uh, big win last week, thirty-one eleven. So. Uh, you know, we're fucking going to win the whole goddamn thing. And I'll be really excited. Yeah, bro. Now, what we all love to talk about here at Bright Lights Podcast. No, one we of our fucking favorite. hate to talk about it. Yeah, and one of, what, baseball? You hate talking about baseball? Yeah, I hate what we're about to talk about baseball. No, we're going to talk about Arenado first. Oh, well, okay. Let's, let's have a little happiness before the, the crushing sets in. Um Probably one of my favorite players. Probably everybody, one of their favorite players. Nolan Arenado signed a massive contract saying fuck you to Manny Machado for breaking his AAV. Um, what what do you have to say, Deegs? I love this signing, and everybody knew it was going to happen. Yeah, I mean, good for him. I tweeted, I tweeted earlier today, actually. I, th- I think, PT, you liked it. Um, yes, I did. I did like it. I said that um, I love him when he's not playing the Padres because oh yeah, he, I saw that. he's so fucking good, dude. He's the best defensive third baseman in the league. The guy rakes. He'll probably win like an MVP or two in the next three years. Uh, interesting thing with his contract is he has an opt-out after the third year. I think he'll be 31 after that year. So um, unless he goes on like an absolute tear, I, highly I don't see him. Yeah. I, I think he's going to retire a Rocky as he should because, you know, he's, he's – he could go down as the best player in that franchise's history. Uh-huh. Obviously, from a from a Padres fan standpoint, I would have much rather had him out of the division. But the dude's good. He got paid. He deserved to make more than Machado because he's a better player than Machado. But uh, in the end, technically, AAV-wise, he gets more. Machado still gets more guaranteed money. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, Everybody's happy. Call. Everybody's happy. There's no lose-lose in this situation. Yeah. Machado, uh, Arenado gets his money. The Colorado Rockies kept their best player ever, probably. So, mm-hmm. yeah. good for them. Yeah, and uh, I guess what I want to just kind of touch on is with the whole Arenado signing, that fucks a lot of teams. Because Arenado was probably the biggest, yeah. the biggest would have been the biggest fish on the market next offseason. Yeah, yeah that, I mean, there was a lot of reports that, that the Padres were, were willing to wait out for Arenado or Rendon. For next off season, um, thank God they got Machado because yeah. I don't think Rendon is going to hit the market either. So it just just makes the Machado signing a whole lot smarter for San Diego that they got their guy instead of waiting. That that just shows right there. The, the, the Arenado extension shows that when you have prime talent on the market, you, you never wait. It, yeah. You just go just go fucking get him. Yeah, uh, maybe you can talk to Jerry Reinsdorf for me and just kind of put that in his fucking skull. Nah, it won't go through a stick school, unfortunately. No, it will not. God, I fucking hate that guy. Um, let's see. Now let's let's talk about some more free agent stuff. Let's talk about a uh, good old Brycey. He's gonna go. He's this is literally gonna go until March. I I hope you understand this. Well, no shit. We're t- a day away. Tomorrow's March. No, it's just just ridiculous. No, actually, tomorrow's not March. The day after tomorrow's March. So he says well, tomorrow. Well, the, the episode's March. coming out on the twenty eighth. So, all right, fuck you. <laughs> As of this recording, it's not. It's we're two days away from March. Um, a couple things with Harper. Well, he, he he met with the he met with the Giants in Vegas today. Met with the Dodgers like two days ago. Um, the Dodgers don't want to go long term. The Giants, <laughs> I guess, today they discussed a ten year deal with him. Um. I think it's increasingly becoming likely that he doesn't go to Philadelphia. That the Dodgers are actually now the betting favorites to get him. But um, I don't know, dude. I just want—I don't even give a shit. I just want him to fucking sign so that this can be over with and we don't have to talk about it ever again. I never want to talk about Bryce Harper ever again after he signs. He's gonna come up again. Um, I, don't, I honestly hope it doesn't because it's just—it's just, just pissing me off. Yeah, it's been—it's been a rough, rough off season for everybody. Um, I mean, 
I'm kind of excited what we're about to do next if there's nothing else that we have to talk about. Yeah, let's jump into it. I think. No, yeah, I think we're good. All right. So when you guys are listening, I'll, I might put a little music, a little, little tiny little piano going just right now. A little welcome to the first ever Bright Lights podcast MLB preseason award show. Yeah, I mean, we did our uh, our like actual MLB awards last week. This week, Mahoney sat down. He uh, came up with some some pretty fun awards. So yeah, that super fun. All of us are going to give our predictions for. Um, it's the first ever Bright Lights Award Show. We'll, we'll we'll probably do this for football too, just because it sounds oh, like yeah. a like a dandy idea. A but dandy, um, yeah. We'll probably right, revisit we this list too at the end of the year. See how we did with. Uh, Predictions. With our with our award predictions, yeah, I mean you yeah. just yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, what you want to just go like one by one, talk about what we have, why yeah. we have that? Yeah, I, I mean, I'll start it out. Our first award, the most disappointing team. Um, they were probably the most surprising team last year. They had ninety wins. Um, I have the Tampa Bay Rays being the most disappointing team this year. I don't see them doing anything this year. I they, I feel like they've subtracted more than they've added. Um, yeah, I mean, the Tampa Bay Rays, I mean, other than when they went to the World Series, I forgot what year that was. I think it was 2010. 08. 08. 08. Oh, that was 08. Wow, that was a long time ago. Um, I just don't – they haven't done anything, and they'll continue not to do anything until that new stadium is put in in two years. So, uh, well, I'll, I'll pass it off to – We'll do well, Diego. We'll do you, buddy. Okay, my most disappointing team is a team that um I thought they were gonna be really good going into this year, and now after pretty much one of the shittiest, most disappointing off seasons ever, um, I'm not looking too good going into 2019. I got the Philadelphia Phillies. Yep. Um, at the beginning of the off season, they were talking about just dropping shit tons, shit of, tons money of money. Yeah. Like agents. So far, they haven't done anything. They missed out on Machado. Um, it's Looks like they're going to miss, miss Harper. Harper. Yeah. Uh, reports coming out that they don't want to pay Kimbrel. They they they're weary about Keiko. Odubel Herrera just has just got hurt with a hamstring injury, I think. Um, so when you when you have a center fielder who who primarily relies on his speed because he plays center field, going down with a leg injury that's never good. Um, the pitching staff outside of Aaron Nola kind of kind of scares me a little bit. Arietta, not really sure how I feel about him. Um, Nick Pavetta, not really sure how I feel about him either. Their bullpen kind of sucks instead of Sir Anthony Dominguez. Um, their manager, not not really a big fan of Gabe Kepler. I kind of think he's a fucking idiot. Mm. And then I mean, this is a team that started out super hot last year. They finished below 500 when a lot of people picked them to go to the wild card, potentially even win that division. So, uh, yeah, I, I think that they set the expectations too high for themselves with saying that they're going to go out and spend stupid money, potentially bringing both Machado and Harper in. They didn't get either of them, and they probably won't get either of them. So, yeah, I, I have the Phillies as my most disappointing team. Yeah. All right. This, this, this one's spicy. This is a hot take for everyone out here, all right? My most disappointing team in 2019 will be the Chicago Cubs. And for this, <laughs> oh, wow. And for this sole reason, <laughs> it hurt them last year, too. Their bullpen – they, they let them down. They gave up a ton of runs, and, and towards the end of the season, kind of hurt them really bad. And um, that was their main issue, like focus going into the free agency. And they did jack shit. They did nothing. And um, I think that's going to hurt them again this year. And I think that it's going to. They they might sneak into the playoffs, but they're not going to do anything again. And that's going to disappoint a lot of Cubs fans out there that think that they could they can make another World Series run. I, I could definitely see it, dude. I could, especially in in that division. I, I could definitely it's, see the Cubs. All the teams basically improved in that division. I mean, yeah, I could, I could definitely see that. That's not as spicy. I thought he was going to come out and say like the Dodgers or like the Red Sox or something. No, I, I saw a thing today on Twitter or not Twitter, is Instagram. I'm trying to find it, but I can't. You Darvish had a very, very shitty spring training debut today. He looked awful. He had I mean, four walks in an inning in the third. Um, yeah, he looked really bad. And then Tyler Chatwood looked fucking awful for the He's Cubs. Terrible. Um, I don't. I, I could see where you're going, PT. Yeah, their their pitching is awful. Yep. We'll we'll see how the Cubs yeah. do this year. All right, now we're gonna go to the most disappointing player. Um, 
So, I guess this is kind of a hot take. He threw a no-hitter last year, um, was north of the border. Well, he threw his no-hitter north of the border. He's from north of the border also. Oh, wow. wow. Um, I'm saying Big Maple, James Paxton, is going to be the most disappointing player this year. Um, he, he, he had a great start to the year last year and really started to digress towards the end of the year. Um, now that he's going to be in the spotlight with the Yankees, I can see him kind of not fall into the New York media or like falling into the New York media struggling. Um, I don't, I've always liked James Paxton. Um, when he came up to the league, I actually picked him for my fancy baseball team. Um, I just don't see it happening for him this year. Just, yeah. I mean, I hope he does good. I mean, I would never want anybody to do bad. Um, the New York Yankees right now have a pretty good rotation. And if James Paxton is where he was at last year, they'll be really good. But James Paxton, I have you as my most disappointing player. Yeah, I'm sure he's listening. He is. Uh, yes, my he most is. disappointing player is a guy who's not signed yet. Um, I got Dallas Keuchel, uh, 31-year-old Dallas one, Keuchel, yeah. solely for the purpose that I think some team is – they're either going to give him a one-year deal – or some team's going to come calling and give him a four to five year deal, and and you give a thirty one year old guy four to five years for however much money he wants. That just that just screams James Shields esque kind of deal to me. So uh, sorry, you don't say that right name now. on Bright Lights podcast. Um. So yeah, man. I just I I'm I'm I was never too sold on Keiko even when he won the Cy Young. I uh, just don't think his stuff plays anymore at the big league level. So, yeah, that's that's my guy. Who's your guy, PT? All right, this is another hot take. Uh, Yasmani Grandal will be my most disappointing player if he does not improve his defense. Okay? It, he struggled in the playoffs, and I know a lot of Brewers fans were concerned that if he doesn't improve his defense, that he could possibly be one, a dis, one of the most disappointing players in 2019. Yeah. Um... So now going from the the negative of Bright Lights Pod, we're bringing back the love from our Valentine's Day special. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to show love to who we think are going to be going to be the most surprising thing. So first, let's start off with the most surprising team. I've got the Los Angeles Angels. Um, they've all. I would say that they've probably been the most disappointing the last since Mike Trout's been on the team. Um, when you have the best baseball player in the generation and you only make the playoffs once with him and his contract's up in two years and you've only been to the playoffs once, it's just sad and disappointing. Um, I know they really didn't add much this uh, past off season, but I think with the additions of Trevor Cahill and Matt Harvey, that improves their starting rotation from what they were at last year. Um, pitching was probably one of their biggest problems. It hurts that they're not going to have Otani this year, but they've got the bats. They've got the sticks. I'd love to see what they can do. Um, I have the Los Angeles Angels as my surprise team of the year. My surprise team is your most disappointing team, uh, the Tampa Bay Rays. Oh, yeah. Um, the Rays came out of nowhere last year. They won 90 plus games, would have made the playoffs, but they not played in a loaded AL East. Um, they added Charlie Morton, who's really good. Yeah. Even though he's older, he's really good. Um, and just the, 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 the Rays just find out how to turn guys into low-risk or low-contract guys into good players. Uh-huh. Charlie Morton, um, you got Blake Snell, the reigning AL Cy Young Award winner. He's an up-and-coming stud. I, I love Blake Snell as a pitcher. You got um, one of the guys they traded for from the the Pirates. I can't remember his name right now, but he throws absolute gas. He's like 6'5", 6'6". Oh, Honeywell? No. Well, I mean, they have Honeywell, too. No, Honeywell is one of their guys. Honeywell should be up this year. Um, Austin Meadows should be up this year. You got Tommy Pham, Matt Duffy. You, You have a bunch of good, talented players. In that Tampa on that Tampa Bay Rays team, and obviously they have they have a really good bullpen. If they continue to do that um, opener strategy, uh, I mean it, it worked for them last year. So so why not stick with something if it actually works for your team? But um, yeah, I mean I just think that although they might miss out on the playoffs this year, I, I don't think what they did last year was a fluke, and they'll continue to 
build on that success they had last season. Yeah, PC, who do you have yours as your surprise team? Uh, shout out, Draft Nate Mark. Um, shout out. We have the Mets as my surprising team just because of all of the great free agent requirements they had. Uh, Familia, Davis, Ramos, just a couple of names out there. I think they improved their team a ton over free agency, and I think they'll, they'll definitely be a surprise team that make a big jump. Yeah, I actually do definitely agree with the Mets. I think that they're going to be great this year, especially adding Edwin Diaz and Cano. Just makes their team better. Um, now going from surprise team to surprise player. This is a, this is an interesting one that I got for you guys. Um, sticking with the Yankees, uh, he recently got traded. Um, I'm starting about talking about starting pitcher Sony Gray. Um, I'm excited to see what he does this year in Cincinnati. Um, he's better in the smaller market teams. We saw that when he was with Oakland. Um, he, he was in the spotlight with the Yankees, and it didn't work well for him. He didn't like it. You could tell he didn't like it. You could tell he wasn't happy in New York. New York was definitely not happy with him. The media shit on him all the time. Um, he was just disappointing for the Yankees ever since that trade happened. Kind of reminds me of James Shields kind of deal. Oh, God, that hurts to say. Um, but Sony Gray, he's going to bounce back with the Reds. I, I just see it. I see him going back to his A's form and just being fantastic. Yeah, man. Um, my surprise player is uh, kind of a homer pick here. Uh, Will Myers, San Diego Padres, oh, left fielder, Will Myers. Homer. Um, interesting thing, obviously, we, we, we got him from the Tampa Bay Rays and we're quite contra- what could potentially be looked at as a kind of a controversial trade at this point. But um, every year that Will Myers has played more than 150 games in with the Padres, which is two of the four seasons he's been there, guys said he's almost been part of the 30-30 club, 30 home runs, 30 doubles. Last season, spent most of the year on the DL, not the IL, because fuck that. Uh, only played 80 games. I, I I think if he stays healthy, he's, he's still probably the second best hitter in this lineup right now. Uh, the dude mashes. I mean, I don't really care if he hits for a high average because he's, he's he doesn't have to. He just he's, he's he's there to hit home runs, play good defense, and he's a legitimate thirty thirty candidate when he's healthy. So that's my guy. It's gonna surprise a lot of people. Good job, Homer. All right, PT, what do you got? All right, my surprise player is Peter Alonso. Um, he's an extra base hitting machine and just hits the absolute shit out of the ball. So I definitely think he's going to surprise a lot of people this year. Yeah. I mean, we talked about it last week. Uh, he's my prediction for a rookie of the year this year in the NL. I'm excited to see what he does. I'm excited to see what the Mets do. It's definitely going to be a good year for New York, the Mets. Um, so now going from surprise to biggest douche of the year. Um, mine's kind of shocking. Not going to lie. Um, He's had his flashes of douchiness, but I think it's really going to go into form this year, especially with him going to the New York Yankees. Um, he's going to live up to that douchebag expectation. I'm talking about Troy Tulowitzki. Um, oh Troy Tulowitzki, I just see it because when you go to your favorite team ever, you kind of get a little cocky. You kind of get a little chip on your shoulder when you're confident. Um, we've already seen that this year in spring training with Troy Tulowitzki when he hit his home run off of Marcus Stroman. He was loving it. He was going around the bases, screaming, let's fucking go. He was pumped. Um, I don't think this is going to be a bad douchebag. I think this is going to be a... Look at me. You guys thought I wasn't good enough anymore. Kind of like he's going to be really cocky and really confident about everything. Um, yeah, Troy Tulowitzki, you're going to be a douchebag, buddy. Yeah, I'm going to actually piggyback off you that. Um, I kind of have the same mentality with douchebag of the year for my guy. Um, my guy's Manny Machado. And not just because he's being a douchebag. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Go ahead, PT. Get going. I love it. I, I, just not because he's going to be a douchebag, just because he's, he's, he's going to be on his F the World Tour, you know? I mean, yeah, he held out a long time in free agency and kind of made hell for everyone else, but also the media fucked with him majorly. Yeah. Um, so I think I think he's going to go out there, and uh, I think, yeah, he's going he's gonna to play with a little bit of confidence, and he's definitely going to be out there. Not, I don't think, you know, he might not even talk to the media. We never know. We'll see what happens. Um, yeah. It's going to be interesting. 
I love it. I love it. I, I agree with Machado. You guys yeah. just sound like a bunch of salty White Sox fans that missed out. Wait, on did you listen to what he said? No, he didn't because he left the room. Did you listen to what he said? No, I left because it's fucking stupid. No, You're it's honest. because he's on his revenge tour. Yeah. Like I said with Tulo, it's kind of like revenge and stuff. All right, cool. Go ahead. You, you go to your biggest douche of the year. All right, my, my biggest douchebag is uh, Alex Wood, Cincinnati Reds, left-handed pitcher. Okay. Um, I, he's just like I, – I, I vividly remember one time Alex Wood was pitching against the Padres, and uh, Jose Perella was on second base. And, like, he was just standing there, like, you know, like taking a fucking lead off like every single player does. And Wood just, like, turn around and sort of screaming at him. And, like, accusing him when of was that? Pitch. Was that last year? Uh, last year. It was last year. I remember that, yeah. He started, like, screaming at him, like, accusing him of stealing pitches and stuff. Um, and, I, I, honestly, in, in my opinion, Alex, he's he just sucks. Like, I, I don't think he's a good pitcher at not, all. Not anymore. I don't think and so anymore. He's, he's, he's going to play in a hitter's ballpark. Um, he's, he's just a gigantic asshole. There's, there's so many guys that could be on this list, but... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, dude, I, I, I think Alex Wood is just a fucking prick. Yeah, so... I, I hope he gets lit up every single time he pitches. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> some uh, strong some strong blood for him, huh? I, I despise him. for Just for no reason. He just, like... That would be like if you were just standing on second base and some random guy just turned around and started fucking calling him an oaf. Like, out of nowhere. Like, just fuck that guy. Yeah. All right, well... Now, getting kind of creative with our awards, we all know the Rookie of the Year award. So now, here at Bright Lights Podcast, we're gonna we're gonna show some love to the sophomores of the year, the second year players. Um, mine is actually one that not a lot of people know about. Um, he played for the Miami Marlins, Brian Anderson. Um, Brian Anderson, nobody talked about him ever. Um, he's a big, lengthy kid. Uh, he batted 280 actually, and again he got voted votes for rookie of the year last year. But nobody nobody shows him any love, and I feel like this year is going to be the year where people are going to start to notice him and be like, "Oh wow, this Brian Anderson can kind of swing it. He can kind of hack a little bit." Um, and adding to that, I mean, he's a pretty good fielder too. I know the Marlins don't have anything really to be excited about, but this Brian Anderson kid is probably their their hope and joy right now. So. Brian Anderson, keep doing you, buddy. Keep doing you. Yeah, my sophomore of the year award um, is Walker Bueller of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Um, you know, I, I honestly think he's the best pitcher on that staff right now, even with Kershaw there. Um, Kershaw's getting older, man. His, his arm is diminishing. Uh-huh. They, they just shut him down for the spring. I don't know for the whole spring, but he just got shut down uh, a few days ago. Um, last year, Bueller had like a 2-5 ERA. Got some Cy Young votes. Was really, really good in the postseason for the Dodgers. Like, really good. They don't win some games without him. Um, he's got really good stuff. I, he, he throws hard. He, he commands his fastball well and bases his off-speed pitches off of that. So, I, I think Bueller is a really, really good player. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he won the, the, Cy, the Cy Young this year. So um, He'll definitely yeah. be a candidate for sure. He's, he's my pick to win this. All right, my sophomore of the year uh, is a pretty safe pick. He won Rookie of the Year last year at Ronald Acuna. Um, I think the Braves uh, are going to be have a good supporting cast around him. I think he's going to have another great year. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, what is there not to love about Ronald Acuna? I mean, he's a beast, and he'll, he'll definitely continue to be a beast, uh, especially with the Braves making a bigger push this year for the World Series. Um, now we're going to go to the Oldest Fart Award, where we talk about – We've all had our veteran guys. I mean, the Cubs fans, they all had David Ross. Um, um, I just, sticking with the Cubs, I got Ben Zobrist. I never realized how old he was. He's 38 years old. Um, he actually had a fantastic year last year after having a down year a couple years ago. Um, ben Zobrist has been the man in Chicago. He was the man in uh, Kansas City when they won it. He was the man in Tampa Bay. Um, he's He just always produces, and he hasn't been anything mediocre. He's always been above average. He's always proven himself. And you know what? He still moves around pretty good for his age. Um, so I, I would even go as far as to say as Ben Zobers is probably the most athletic old guy too. So, yeah, oldest part award, Ben Zobrist. 
Uh, mine's going to be Nelson Cruz, Minnesota Twins, just because he's he's getting up there. He's, he's almost 40, and the, the guy still has the power in him to hit 35 to 40 bombs. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just think that he, that he's, he's going to be a really good middle of the order bat for a team that is going to surprise a lot of people this year in the Minnesota Twins. My oldest father, um, is Ichiro just because who does love Ichiro? Ichiro's I mean, the man. He, he's, oh, he's, oh, yeah. he's amazing. Um, you, there's nothing to hate about the guy. He, he, he's, he's just a great guy. So that's my oldest father. Yeah, yeah, we'll see if Ichiro even plays this whole year. I know they were saying that he's going to play the Japan Series to open up the year, but we'll see what happens. It might be a good way for him to curtain call over in Japan. Um, now we're going to go from Oldest Part Award to Utility Award, where we're just going to highlight probably the best bench guy, best utility guy that can really play anywhere. Um, my guy came up huge in the playoffs for the Boston Red Sox. Hit a cycle against the Yankees, and I know Yankees fans will never forget that. I'm talking about Brock Holt, the man with some beautiful, luscious hair. Um, Brock Holt's just a little dude. can hit. He hits really good. He feels really good. Does anything you really ask of him. He's a good guy. He gets stuff done. and Honestly, he's one of the most perfect utility guys that I can think of. And There's really not a lot of those guys in the league that can really be a utility guy. As we can see now with uh, Marwin Gonzalez, who is kind of just, you know, he, he got paid because of it for being a utility guy. So, Deegs, go ahead, buddy. What's your utility guy? Yeah, my guy's pretty obvious. Um, it is Marwin Gonzalez, Minnesota Twins. Like you said, the the, the the dude played everywhere last year except for catcher. He, he did not catch, but uh, and he didn't pitch either. But he, he played everywhere else, first, second, anywhere. Anywhere you want this guy to play, he's, he's going to play. Um, I think he's going to be really important for the, for the Twins because he can give guys off days when they need it. He can play literally anywhere, any 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 fit that they have to that that they have to fill. Just toss him in there. Um, offensively speaking, kind of had a down year last year, but I mean, if if, if he hits two sixty five, two seventy with with the versatility he brings, that's that's going to live up to everything. So that's my guy. He's he's kind of the the most and like the best utility player in the league right now in my rings off. Yeah, we, are, we have our first double of the day. Um, I also have Marwin Gonzalez. As Deeks pointed earlier, he got paid by the Twins. I think he's going to fill a lot of holes that he can really, like Deeks said, give breaks to people. And it's going to be really important for the Twins moving forward. Yeah. Um, now, going to the funniest player award. I, I really like talking about it. Um, we're going to talk about the funniest, most exciting, most entertaining players to watch. Mine... We were talking about it. Deegs was saying he was a homer earlier. I'm going to be a homer right now, and I'm going to pick Yolmer Sanchez. Um, just Yolmer keeps everything light around the clubhouse. I mean, you see, everybody saw last year him dumping coolers on himself. Um, I actually have a shirt of Yolmer Sanchez dumping the wa- the Gatorade or water on himself. Um, you see him in the – and actually, you know what? A lot of people don't know this, but – Yolmer's been around for like four years, three, four years with the White Sox, and he he was a chunky dude when he came up to the league. He was a little little chubby dude, um, but since then he's gotten jacked, and he actually produces for the White Sox, and he just he adds a funny, comedic. I mean, I know fans love him. Um, I guess with coming around with the funniest player, you gotta you gotta be able to talk to the fans and interact with the fans well. Every single game that I'm at with the White Sox, Yomer finds, signs as many autographs as he can. He talks to as many kids as he can. I know Sox Fest, he's really big at Sox Fest. Um, just a great guy in general, and he's hilarious and really keeps everything light. My funniest player word goes to Yomer Sanchez. Um, mine's kind of like a basic one. I mean, um, Francisco Lindor, the Cleveland yeah. Indians. Um, dude, dude loves playing baseball. You you can tell that when he's playing the game, he, he there's there's nothing else he'd rather do. Really big on the uh, celebration kind of guy, which is kind of big for me and in, in for this award. Um, he's flashy. The fans love him. I'll never ever ever forget the home run that he hit in Puerto Rico. That was insane. So yeah, I mean, it's my guy Francisco Lindor. Yeah, my funniest player. Um, he's he's new to Cincinnati. Yes, yes, he'll puig. Um, if you follow his Twitter, uh, he almost posts a video a day. He, he loves it there. 
Um, mm-hmm. He's having a great time. He's, he's, he's already made plenty of friends in that clubhouse, and he just looks like he's having the time of his life in Cincinnati. Um, good for him. I think he's going to be one of the funniest players to watch this year for sure. Yeah, he's always entertaining for yeah, sure. If you don't follow him on Twitter, you most definitely should. Oh, yeah, definitely. I know I do. Yep, I do too. He's hilarious. Um, now we're going to close it out with one last final award. Our, who we think is going to be the most athletic player of the year. Um, my guy, kind of, he was quiet last year, um, but I know he was fantastic in the field. He plays in St. Louis with the Cardinals. I think he's going to have a breakout year this year. I'm talking about Harrison Bader. Um, I, I've been watching videos of Harrison Bader. He's, he had a couple like small little documentary things come out. And they've been awesome to watch. Um, you know, just a Bronx kid trying to really work hard and really do the best that he can. And you can really see that he's just completely built. He's jacked. He's fast. He can hit the ball. He can field. Um, I can just see him doing some special things this year with the bat, with the glove, with base stealing. I mean, he's a quick guy. Um, the Cardinals have something special with Harrison Bader. Um, the Cardinals are definitely going to be a team to watch. And I think with Harrison Bader this year, the Cardinals are going to make the push. Um, Harrison Bader, buddy, you're going to be the most athletic this year. Yeah, I mean, this this was kind of a hard one for me to pick. Um, obviously, if you, if you want to look at it from a speed perspective, it's kind of hard to go to pick against Billy Hamilton. Um, I went kind of like a, kind of like a weird route because this is a guy that has didn't really play a lot last year because of an injury but um i'm gonna go kevin kiermeyer the Tampa bay rays outfielder um watch that guy play defense and you'll understand why um he's insane the the, the, the dude covers so much ground out there in center field he, he plays arguably the most athletic position if not shortstop in the game of baseball diving all over the place robbing guys with hits in the gap he's a monster so that's my guy kevin kiermeyer all right, my most athletic player had the best season of his career last year. Um, Javi Baez, the Chicago Cubs. If you just watch this guy play defense, it is fun to watch. Um, he's smooth. He's quick. He makes unbelievable. I mean, his tags are unbelievable. Um, sometimes they're uh, they are unbelievable. Um, it, he he just flat. He's flashy. He um he also could be a the, one of the funniest players to watch too. He he's just he's just something. He makes the ba- he makes the game of baseball better. So that's my most athletic player. Yeah, so uh, that closes out for our first ever Bright Lights Podcast Awards show. Um, I'm the only one clapping, if anybody's wondering. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're going to keep revisiting this. We're going to do it for football. We'll probably do this again at the end of the year for baseball. Um, just kind of something fun, you know, keeping it light here at Bright Lights Podcast, having a good old time, right? Always. It's always, old, always it's a good to old do. showing love. Just keeping it light, bro. We're just we're just such good people. Yeah. I, I I can't believe how good people we are. We we show love. We shit on people when they suck. Yeah. We um we just we, we just give a th- we we give the people what they fucking want, man. At Brothers Podcast. Oh, um, uh, another thing that I want to talk about real quick. Um, I know a lot of people probably know that Johnny Manziel was released from the CFL. But it also just came out that he is banned for life from the CFL. Um, yeah. Apparently, he breached his contract and uh, can't he can't play in the CFL anymore. Yeah, it's whatever. The guy's done. He's he's been given plenty of opportunities. Chances. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's taking last chance. You like way too far. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's time to it just is. call it a career. Yeah. Go get like a uh, like a pick and save or something, dog. And actually, you know what? Uh, uh, they can save. Uh, actually, I have a shout out right now. Shout out to the Brother Ice Crusaders uh, point guard Marquise Kennedy Liola commit. Um, hit a three today to win the regional. So they play Simeon next week. So go Crusaders, baby! Roll Crusaders! I got a shout out too. Um, shout out to my boys down at uh, Huntley High School. Baseball season starts today. Baseball gotta also keep, started for baseball, chasing, right? Baby. Yep. You, you, Got to finish what we started last year. Go get that fucking ring. So, um, but yeah, that's all we got today. Wonderful Brothers Podcast. Wonderful. Episode 18. Yep. Uh, next, next episode is episode 20. Can't, can't, can't believe it. Two zip. Two zip. Two zip. Um, if I, I would have told you 
19 episodes ago that I would be podcasting with these fucking idiots for 20 episodes. I probably wouldn't have believed myself. Yeah. But uh, love them to death. Uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. All the good MySpace, shit. Yep. Um, Webkins. Web- <laughs> I guess we're on Webkins now. Um, uh, Club Penguin, fucking- where they're bringing it back for us. We're on fucking Omegle, everything, man. Everything. LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Everywhere that you want to look, we're there. Yep. So uh, follow us, and uh, thanks for listening. Have a good one. Perfect. 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 Perfect.